right guys, how's it going? What a year. So a lot has changed in the fish room. Uh, I've turned about 25 of my wilds into about 250 just in the last month. Uh, doing a ton of research on water, on foods, on different, trying different breeding techniques. And I think I found something that's a little different. And uh, I figured I'm gonna make a four part series because I was gonna try to get everything into one video. And what I find is when I do that, I miss a lot of stuff in those videos, uh, stuff that I wanted to talk about, but it's, you know, we're trying to get this, all this information in a 10, 15, 20 minute video, and it's not realistic. Uh, if you really wanna dive into stuff, you gotta, you know, read books and paper, scientific papers and stuff like that. That's how you find out real information. So today we're gonna talk about medications. I've changed my stance on medications 100% from when I was doing domestics because I kind of, you know, was taught a certain way, um, antibiotics and stuff like that. And, you know, yeah, I was using YouTube and the internet, but what I find is it's a lot of repeating going on on the internet as far as even uh, articles and uh, especially YouTube. So today I'm going to talk about the medications I use and how and how I've kind of switched over from my old techniques to the new techniques. So dealing with these wild discus, you know, we're not going to get, you know, bacterial. That's not going to be our our biggest problem is going to be internal parasites, external parasites, gill flukes, and so stuff like that. And I went high and low on this uh, topic to try to find the right treatments because what I found before was it seemed like I was just retreating like every six months it seemed like I had to retreat and I wasn't getting the results and not only for cost wise because that really wasn't the issue it was just putting the fish through unnecessary treatments in my opinion and that's one thing about these videos is these are my opinions yes I do tons of research and I spent hours upon hours reading and I try stuff in my fish room. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it works, sometimes I get breakthroughs. But really it's about patience, understanding that this is just a process and it takes time. Now turning 25 wild discus into 250 wild discus or F1s or F2s, um, I feel like this process that I'm using now is a little more effective and I'm not using truckloads of antibiotics anymore. In fact, I'm hardly using any. I've done one treatment on one tank uh, just because I noticed that they were kind of getting that old discus, you know, that that not vitality after I'd been treating with other meds. So I still have it in my arsenal as far as metronidazole and erythromycin and all that stuff. But my go-tos now are uh, levamisole. So I will be putting out a, a, a Levamisole treatment uh, series and I w I'm building a website as we speak. I just spent two grand on, a, on a, a computer to help build a website and to run better videos. Cause that's what I found is, you know, a video that took me two or three hours to edit because my stuff was kind of all over the place and I didn't have everything contained to one area and just my download speed, everything was just, so it made it hard to make videos because that time could have, been, could have been spent with my family or they could have been spent, you know, in the fish room trying to learn something. Um, not that I don't want to get these videos out, but after a three hour tour making videos, you're pretty burnt and you would think, oh, you're just sitting there on a computer screen, but it, it tires you out. So, Levamisole. I will be coming out with the exact dosages. Now I use a powder 99.9% .9 pure levamisole. So the, the dosages are very, very small. And I do a two day dosage. So I do 48 hours and then I wait three weeks and then I do another 48 hours. This kills about 18 different parasites. So is, it, is that all of them? No, there's more. And there's some that are gonna just not you're not going to be able to treat. Uh, in all this work I've done in the last eight months, I've lost three discus. I'll be very honest with that because, you know, trying these treatments out and trying dosages, you're kind of just, not really winging it, but you're kind of trying stuff out 
to be the most effective and the least amount of stress on the fish. So that's the balance point, right? And the two day treatment and then the three week follow up is crucial because what I find is it's the cleaning process after you deworm them that is the, the key to this because you are really, you know, eradicating those out of the fish, but you're not, it's hard to eradicate them out of the tank. So by bringing the numbers down by the first dosage and cleaning the tank real well, and I'll go through all this in a video and uh, I'll have it on my website on how I actually do the process, you know, from start to finish and exact times and dates to do water changes and stuff like that. But um, just the fact that you're cleaning, it's the cleaning, you know, so a planted tank is going to be a little bit harder. I'd probably do a third one on a planted tank just because there's so many crevices and stuff. So you know that I do, you know, mostly uh, bare bottoms. Um, but it's that second one where I don't think the the uh, parasite level is that intense because they're probably just hatching out and you're getting more of the egg and larvae stage. So eradicating them out of that second uh, cleaning is way more effective. So that's what's nice about it. It's a three week treatment. Now, the other one is Praziquantel. Now, I've been using Hikari uh, Prazi Pro. Kind of the problem with that, well, the benefits to that is it dissolves in the water. Excellent. It's a great product. There's no doubt about it. I enjoy I enjoy the, the, the results I get from that Prazi Pro because some of my wild disks are coming in with, I mean, in, they were infested with gill flukes and body flukes and those are interchangeable the gill flukes can get in the body and the body can get in the gills and so they're they're pretty much just a fluke right and if you ever seen one on the microscope they got a hook and that hook gets into their gill and that's kind of how they hang on and uh, even when you kill the parasite that hook tends to stay and it irritates the fish so i was talking to a wet vet and this guy was now that i realize what he did um and a biologist and then a wet vet they weren't specialized in fish now the one wet pet was pretty specialized and he told me six months of prosy treatment i was like dude that that's insane you can't put a fish through man prosy is pretty pretty mild so it's not really out of the question but i was thinking there's got to be a better way so what I found is a 99% uh, powder. Now the problem with the powders is they do not dissolve as well. So if you think you're going to put it in the tank, it's going to dissolve like salt or something. It's not. It's going to take a while. Now you can you can dilute it in alcohol and uh, break it down and get it into the water. Uh, I tend not to do that. I just I just dose because it's a three week treatment. Now the difference between the prosy and the uh, levamisole is it stays in the water the whole time. So you do a seven day treatment, you take two or three days off, you do a seven day treatment, you take two or three days off, two or three days off, and in those two or three days, you're doing massive water changes to same reason to clear out any, you know, eggs and parasites. And then you do a third treatment. Now, the first and the second treatment are very effective, very, very effective, but to eradicate them, I have to do that third treatment. Now, I want you to understand these are with wild fish. Now, is that different than domestics? I don't know. It could be. But I'm thinking that if you're going to go through the two-week process, it makes sense to go that third week. Because I just find that when I do a gill scraping or a, a, you know, a body scrape, that there's nothing there as far. And I have no more rapid gill movement. I have no more scraping, flashing, and all that stuff. Because there was a couple wilds. They were tough at, no, not tough. It was the Peruvians. They were, it was rough. Um, and actually two died. So two of those died from not the treatment, but from the gill flukes. They were just so infested. And when I did the uh, necropsy on them, they actually were, it was so far back in their gills. You know, usually you see the filaments. When I cut out their gill, the whole back of it was infested with the gill flukes. So that's what made me do a little bit more research and find this treatment. So I will be having the Prozzi Pro. So I'm going to kind of go over all the medicines that I'm going to be having on my website. And, uh, you know, 
it's we're still we're so those two are done they're ready uh, the problem is sourcing because when I'm buying this stuff, I'm buying it in bulk. I'm not buying, you know, a hundred grams. I'm buying kilos of whatever I'm buying. So I'm buying pounds of it. And uh, it has to make sense as far as the price. So when I resell it, I can actually give you guys a fair price. Now, the Levamisol is minuscule. I mean, even on a 100, 200 gallon tank, the amount you use is like so minuscule that it's worth the money whatever it is uh because it solves all your problems now i still i'm still going to sell the metro not as all but here's the thing with the metro if you're going to do an antibiotic treatment please please consider doing a 10 day and that's uh and remember the metro is good for eight hours now all these products i I treat them as light sensitive and that doesn't mean light sensitive just in the container that means light sensitive in the water so I, I drape a towel over I keep the lights dim they're not in high light when I'm treating for meds and I, I just find that two reasons it makes the meds more effective but also it uh, keeps the stress level down on the fish they tend to be a little bit more relaxed in the darker water when they're being treated so erythromycin is another one. Now that's more external problems. You know, a fin comes in, a little fin rod, or there's, you know, something a little white on the fins and stuff like that. So another antibiotic. Now with erythromycin, I do a 10-day treatment too. Um, I don't know the solubility as far as how long it's effective in the water. So I used to use uh, potassium permanganate. Now I have spawned about 200 of the wilds. Um, wild F1s, so trying to create my own strains and make them way more hardy. And I used to use the PP treatments for the 30-day syndrome or 45-day syndrome. I can't remember what they used to call it. But I don't do that anymore because I once did a, uh, I, I, I had a fish die in the PP and I did a, I put it under the microscope. And the, the amount of oxidation that it, it worked on its gills I just don't think it's healthy. I mean, I understand it kills everything and I understand gill flukes and I get all that. But if you've done the treatments beforehand, now when you're getting in huge facilities with thousands and thousands and thousands of fish, you probably almost have to go to that PP treatment because you could, there's no way you can not eradicate out of thousands. You know, I got 35 tanks, so I can really look at fish every day and say, oh, you know, something's wrong there. But everything's isolated. I don't switch fish around a lot. So fish are always kind of in their tank and they're in their tank and usually they're in their tank for six months to a year if they're ever gonna move at all. So um, so the PP I don't use anymore. And I have a, I have a set of discus at, of the wild heckles at 90 days and they're doing great. I have a, uh, let's see, what is it? Blue faced heckle turquoise cross heckle and they're about 40 days and then I have a new batch of 14 days 15 or maybe 20 days and then I have a new batch just that just hatched so I just find that doing the water changes now the series is going to be uh, medications um, breeding how I breed because I breed a little bit different than everybody else um, water so water chemistry but also water changing the fry from soft to hard water how i do that and how much i change on those babies to keep them healthy and then the big one's food what i find with the food is if you're trying to breed discus and you're using over the you know over the counter retail stuff you can, you will have you will have success but there's some ingredients missing that these fish need in the wild that we can't give them. And I've actually found a way to introduce. So all my foods I'm gonna be selling and making are cool foods. They're, nothing gets over you know, 100 degrees. A lot of the pellet foods over 300 degrees. And I don't care what they say. If they say antibiotics, or not antibiotics, probiotics and vitamins, and all, most of that stuff is dead. So you're basically getting, I call those foods extenders. They're, they're, I feed them out but I feed them between good feedings kind of thing. So they kind of just fill the tummy, but they are not doing anything significant as far as keeping the fish super healthy. So the food that I designed actually is pretty, pretty amazing. And all my fish are breeding. 
uh, because of certain products in that food. All right, guys. So I just kind of want to give an overview. So this is the first of the four. If you're interested in all four, subscribe and hit the bell and all that stuff. And I'll try to get everything out within, you know, four to six weeks as far as these four uh, different topics. And again, it's the, um, the medications today. And I'm going to have all those medications. So here's the thing with the website is I'm building it right now. I've talked to tax attorneys, I've talked to regular, I've talked to everybody, so it's ready to go. So right now I'm in the container and labeling phase. So I'm trying to figure that out and get you know the best pricing on that. Because here's the thing, the better pricing I get, um, the better I can sell it to you for and have it more uh, affordable, I guess, you know. I'm not going to get rich doing this and that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I care about the hobby. Been in this hobby a long time and I really think that sometimes more people are interested in profits over the fish. Now, and I get it business is business, but you know, and a, a business without a profit is a hobby. I get it. I understand all that. But that doesn't mean I can't take care of my family and do this full time and be and have, you know, fair pricing. So that's kind of my goal. And then um, the food is, I'm excited about the food. I just, I just finished it. I got a small tweak I got to do on it. It's feeding out amazing. So that's going to be my fourth video. And hopefully by that time, I'll be able to start getting products out. Because the big thing right now is being able to accept stuff online. Now, I'm not going to be able to ship worldwide. Not yet. I've already talked to my tax guy and he said, you better just start in the United States because every time I sell, I got to pay a state tax to that state. So it's going to get quite, a, uh, quite hectic. So that's what I'm setting up right now is the, is the um, tax taxes and the labeling and the containers. Um, and it's, it's a full-time gig. So, you know, I work in my one business in the morning. I get up, I work in the fish room. I'm out the door by nine. I usually get home about two or three and then I worked about 10 at night on the business. So I've uh, been full time. Now making the videos is a whole different thing. So, you know, usually on Sundays I can get around to making videos. And uh, so that's about it. So if you want to see more as far as the series, and then I'm going to keep kind of doing these as far as trying to get as much information into a video as possible and not just do an overview. Um, I would love to give you the measurements of the of the medicines, but here's the problem. The medicines that you have access to is not the same medicines I have access to, or the foods that you get are not the same foods. I get lab grade organics, I get I get the best of the best. And you would think that, you know, people don't use this because of cost. What I'm finding is if you buy in enough bulk, you know, 10 pounds, 20 pounds of something, that that price comes down now i understand that i'm putting money out but i'm i'm willing to invest that money for long-term return um it's not going to be a short-term term turnaround so i understand that but i just feel like i could do something a little different and get quality out to you guys for a great price all right you guys i appreciate you and um i'm going to really focus on getting these videos out now some some people say marketing Yes, it's marketing. That's what it is. But once I get my uh, website going, I hope to have my website up by the end of the year, but I won't be shipping fish until next year. So March of 2024 will be when I start shipping fish. Um, and that's about it. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot. I, I know there's going to be a ton of questions. Leave them in the comments. I answer all the questions. I, you know, I get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I really appreciate you guys. We're at 1,100 subscribers, and that's not even putting out many videos this year because this year I've been doing the testing and working and making sure that when I send these products out, they're going to be ready to go. Now, I know every, not everyone's going to be satisfied or happy, and that's fine. That's part of doing business. And one thing I do is I, I guarantee my stuff. So in all my businesses, it's about reputation. That's first. I don't – profits are important, but my reputation goes above profits. And so anytime you get a business that, 
you know, doesn't give you a call back or care about you as far as you spending your money and then not taking care of you, there's a problem. That's a huge problem for me because I don't like that personally being a, a purchase something and then I don't get, you know, this the service that I, I feel I deserve because I put my hard hard earned money out and I expect a little bit in return when something goes wrong. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.